haven't been able to ride for a couple days, so I'm trying to sneak in a quick little ride here before dinner, before more meetings. Probably get home and find out my email's blown up and everybody's wondering where I am. But anyways, and a perfect topic to talk about today. It's one that's been covered by many, many people. But yeah, the trials and tribulations is trying to be a moto vlogger. Life used to be easy before I strapped this little camera to the side of my head. And started trying to talk to myself. Well, I can talk to myself anytime, but trying to do it in a somewhat intelligent fashion. That's a struggle. Yeah, last year when I first bought Patricia and go out for rides, it was easy. It's like, huh, I want to go for a ride. Grab a pair of gloves and the helmet and two minutes later you're out riding around having a good time. Now to do the full moto vlogging thing. I can't ride without a camera now. It just doesn't seem right. You might miss something. It might be YouTube gold. That 20 second clip that'll put you over the top. Have everybody looking for your channel. Can't risk that by God. So, before you go for a ride or the night before you think you might go for a ride, you gotta make sure you clear off your SD card and make sure your batteries are charged and so forth and then it's not just the camera on the side of your head but I take my big camera with me so you gotta make sure that's charged and you get plenty of room for pictures and more video you gotta make sure the drone's charged and the controller's charged and the iPad's charged and the mp3 player's charged your phone's charged God, I'm running out of charge. Anyways. And once you've verified everything's charged and ready to go, yeah, carry it all down to the spider and figure out where you're going to go. But, oh, wait a minute. He can't just do that. It's cool out this morning, or it's going to get cool while you're riding, so you got to make sure you take a couple extra layers of clothes. Uh, Mother Nature's being a, well, she's just being difficult this year, let's say, so you got to take your rain gear. You might run into somebody, so grab your second helmet, store all that on, and you got the bike all packed up and you're ready to go. All right, so you head out. Now what are you going to talk about? <laughs> Hadn't thought about that, had you? No, not at all. I've tried doing some impromptu where you just talk about what you see and yes, every now and then it works but after one or two of those it's like yeah I gotta do something different I've tried planning little talks and it's like okay this is gonna be fun I'll tell a story and you have the whole story mapped out in your head and while you're out riding you're concentrating on riding you forget half the story and then you have to go back out at a different time, record the other half of the story, and blend all those video clips together in some sense that makes sense. <laughs> oh, genius. Absolute genius. Wonder why I only have three subscribers. And if people are paying attention, they'll notice that, hey, this clip's sunny, this clip's cloudy, this clip's the sun in your face, this clip's the moon's in your face like this wasn't done all at once he couldn't pull it off he couldn't just go out and tell a story yeah well it's true but anyways it's like yeah I'll keep trying those because I do enjoy telling some of the stories you know when you get to be my age it's <laughs> I never knew you're the one of my grandfathers but uh, you know I met a few grandpas during my years and all the ones I enjoyed used to love telling stories, so 
now I'm up to grandpa age, uh, it seems fitting that I want to be telling stories. I just got to get better at it because I don't have any kids to practice on, so, well, welcome to my nightmare. Hmm, I wonder what the hell that was, it just went over. So yeah, I came out here and uh, last Sunday rode around a bit and pretty cool little Neck of Meredith. Called Meredith Neck and it's got all kinds of little dead end roads and switchbacks and other roads and you can study the map and still come out here and get lost. You, you won't get so lost that never find your way back is you know it's what you find the lake you can find your way back it's pretty simple actually but I don't know it's just nice and peaceful out here and hopefully I won't make it too noisy for all the folks that are living out here but yeah back to the story at hand I bought the bought the camera and stuck it to my helmet thinking hey this is going to be easy Let's go out for a test ride and see how well it works. And I went, I drove around for an hour and came back and downloaded the video and it was basically like this the whole way. I misjudged the proper lens position. Like that. That's an easy enough fix. My God, we'll just put a couple clicks on the lens and we'll go out and ride around and a couple clicks turned out to uh, do a little riding around is looking like this. It's like come on Reed you can figure this one out. So I backed off a click or two and huh, it's close enough. Whenever I turn my head it goes crooked but kind of funny my old man used to tell me uh I had to try to get my head on straight. I thought he was talking about the way I was thinking, but apparently he had found a mechanical defect. Every time I turn my head, it tilts. <laughs> oh, you got to be clear with your instructions. I won't figure them out. So anyways, got that all figured out, and it's like, all right, let's figure out the audio. And I know my videos are going to be noisy because I just wear a three-quarter helmet in the summertime. I like feeling the breeze. I have a full face that I wear when it gets colder out. So fall, early spring, the sound quality will probably get a little bit better. But I just really enjoy the... I just find a three-quarter helmet a lot more comfortable. So yeah, there's going to be some noise. It is what it is. Yeah, let's go out and chat up a storm and see if we can put a video together. The old shade tree surgeon said something about you're not going to like your videos. Boy, was he right. I didn't like my videos and I came back and I heard my voice and I was absolutely horrified. It's, oh good lord, I do not sound like that. I do not, I do not. Somewhere between my head and my mouth, this turns into something that is just totally unrecognizable to me. So yeah, there's some getting used to your own voice uh, effects going on. So yeah, then as you study more and more your favorite channels and what's going on and so forth you realize you get to do a nice intro I got a short one that I'm using now that works but yeah it's got to be better and I really haven't concentrated at all on the outros and I haven't really concentrated at all on the outro Ugh. good lord can I talk today and I haven't really concentrated at all on the outros yet. But I probably have to put some thought into it at some point. And 
So if somebody actually stumbles across one of my videos and hangs on to the end, you might find something interesting to another video that might pique their interest. Because I really do ride in some really pretty spots. And I think I'll have some nice footage for people to see. No turn around dead end, so don't go down there. Love to buy a house out here, but they are above my price range. I imagine winter out here could be tons of fun too. I don't know how frequently they power the roads out here. But that's another story. So yeah, I'd love to do a bunch of videos where you just, you know, one of the thoughts was when I brought the camera, I can just do some videos and a squirrel. Actually, it's a chipmunk, but close enough. A little rodent running across the road. But yeah, I get, you know, I was thinking I'd film some of the rides and just put some of my favorite songs over them. And then you do a little bit of research and you find out that, well, you know, you get in all kinds of deep, serious trouble over that because of the copyright infringements on... You know, if you're just showing them in your living room, you can get away with it. But as soon as you put it on YouTube, you got copyright law, and you can get in trouble, and YouTube can kick you off, and go back and watch my first video. That's actually one of my goals, is not get kicked off YouTube. <laughs> it's probably a fairly aggressive goal. <laughs> the way I'm going right at the moment. The other goal was to make sure they never started charging me for the space I use. That's probably also somewhat optimistic, but hey, I've made it about a month and a half so far, so <laughs> you might say I'm exceeding expectations. So yeah, you do a little bit of research and you find out that, yeah, there's some copyright free music, but it's not that good. It usually only comes in two or three minute segments. And if you want to, you know, most of the roads I like, some of the roads I like, most of the roads I like, they're a lot longer than three minutes. And you just, it's not really a dead end, it's a loop. Yeah, you come back to where you started, but you don't have to do any massive turnarounds. That's pretty cool. So yeah, it's one of those deals where, all right, I gotta do some talking. And then you can try to get over the whole voice issue, and then you gotta try to get over the being able to talk about something or put clips together and have them make sense. And the final tribulation of the moto vlogger. Yeah, get over everything that you've gone through to get to the point and you finally go out for a ride and you talk up a storm and it is just, it's gold, Jerry. I'm telling you, it's gold. By God, it's going to go viral. It is perfect. Your friends on Facebook are going to like your Facebook post and their friends are going to see it and friends of friends and by god your subscribers are going to triple overnight yep you're going to go from three to nine and only be too shy of your goal of 11. yep it's going to be a thing of beauty you're going to be somebody yeah i really do it you just nail it it's a good ride you see some things you uh, talk your talk and then you go home and you take off your helmet and there it is your audio cable dangling totally disconnected from the camera yes you've got to be kidding me <laughs> you've absolutely got to be kidding me so then you find yourself out riding around the same roads you rode around trying to reproduce the same talk and just failing miserably but there's only so many hours in the day and days in the week and you're plumb running out of them 
hello. And it's put down the ramp and to do a Dukes of Hazard jump, probably decapitate myself on the frickin' wires. It'd be YouTube gold though, wouldn't it? <laughs> so yeah, and plus there's only so many times I can talk about the same thing before even I get sick of it. Uh, let's try this way. Stone Dam Island. This is a neat little place down here. If it's, if I am where I think I am, we're going by a little passage between Meredith Neck and Stone Dam Island that's known as Sally's Gut. There's a story to Sally's Gut, which I'm not going to tell today because I don't remember it properly enough, but that yeah, might actually make for another video. All I need is somebody to take me out on a ride. Yeah, that stoned them over there. I'm pretty sure that's just the entrance to Sally's gut, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it involves a drunk lady, I'm pretty sure, so it'll be an interesting video. But where the hell was I? Oh, yeah. Trials and tribulations of a moto vlogger. The good news is I don't have to do this, but once you start trying, it's hard to stop. And I do have fun riding. And I am quite often and usually talking to myself, so some of these thoughts are worth preserving and sharing. Obviously not all of them, but some of them. So, I'm going to continue trying. And when you get right down to it, if you're saying you got problems because you're trying to be a moto vlogger, well, those are what could only be considered as first world problems, so quit your bitching and let it go and just go out and have some fun. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm.